Hello, this is Devin from WP Theming, and I want to make a screencast about Optimizely because I use it a lot in my work with Demand Media for optimizing websites and running multivariate testing, and I think it might be very useful for people who have WordPress sites and may not realize how easy it is to run a multivariate test. Um, for folks who don't know what a multivariate test is, it's basically setting up a website to show two different versions of something, two or more versions of something, and um, measuring the performance of those different um, versions. So I think the classic kind of example is you have a, a big button, like a buy now button or a get started button, and you want to see do people actually sign up for the service more if the button is orange and says get started, or do they sign up for it more um, if it is something else like free account. And with Optimizely it's really easy to set up one of these tests and I'll, I'll do an example with WordPress.com just so you can see. Um, but you'll want to log into your Optimizely account and they have a free 30 days um, which is what I did just to make the screencast. Um, so you would create a new experiment and you could use the URL from your website and just paste it in there and let's say WordPress start button is your experiment name and you just create the experiment. Now that the website is loading we'll see a version of it here in the Optimizely dashboard and we can set up a variant. So instead of the button saying get started maybe you want to say have it say get an account or a free account so you'll name your variation what you want it to be. And what I love about um, Optimizely is you, it's really easy to um, change the text of stuff if you know uh, a little bit of JavaScript. And the way you do it is you just say edit code here and I'll need to figure out what this button is and how it works. So it doesn't look like there is an ID on it, but we can use this home signup ID. And plug in a little jQuery. And you see now this says free account. And so if we're running this experiment, you always want to save, um, you would have your original and you would have your free account. And then you could test how that text um, did. And so we're just changing the text here, but you can do anything you want, um, really, as long as you can write the jQuery to do it. So you could change the colors, you could put in a different background. You could do all sorts of things in there. Um, there's also some really cool options for targeting. So if you pull up this here, um, you can run your experiment just on a single URL, or you could run it on um, a substring match, which would mean all the, the pages and posts inside your WordPress site. You could choose your traffic allocation. So maybe you're going to run an experiment that you're worried might have a really negative impact, so you don't want to run it on 100% of your traffic. You can choose to run it maybe just on a small portion of your traffic, maybe 10% of your users, and then you can choose how, like, how traffic gets allocated in those individual variants. So your original could get 5% of total traffic in your free account or your variant can get 5% uh, of traffic as well. Um, there are additional things here for targeting. So you can add more conditions. Um, you could limit it to users in a certain browser. Um, this is useful if you want to test people just in the mobile browser or you can also 
um, exclude mobile browsers because perhaps those users are going to interact with the site differently. So you can have positive conditions and negative conditions. You can also run an experiment based on something that's on the page. So you can set up a custom um, JavaScript condition. So satisfy this condition. And so you could do thing. You could see if a div is on the page, for instance, or um, have your own custom variables that you want it to tee off if someone's in a certain category or, or stuff like that. So it's really flexible in how you can target users. Obviously, I don't own WordPress.com and um, I don't have access to their account to run an experiment like this, but I do have access to my own site. And I really don't have anything great to test on here, but one thing I set up as an experiment was to try changing out some of these link texts in here and see if more users uh, or visitors to my website would click on a link if I had different text in there. And I'll show you how I set this up. So this is my site and I have it running on a, I think just the home URL here. Let's see where I targeted. So. Yeah, I have WP theming and a substring match, which means it's actually running on every single um, page and post and that I have on the site, every single URL on the site, basically. And what I did is I have the original version here that has these links with this text here. And then I just changed the text for these. So instead of saying, at Devin says, I changed that to Twitter. And instead of, um, Managed WordPress hosting, I changed that to WP Engine hosting just to see if people are more likely to click on that affiliate link that I have. Um, and you can see the code for that here is really simple. Um, I'm just changing the text right there. And this experiment has been running for a little while, so we actually have some data. And this is a dashboard that, that shows you um, how people are going through the site. So. Here we have the two variants, original and links different, and it shows you the amount of visitors that have gone through each, so I've had 8,000. And this conversion number is, it basically just means someone who's clicked on the page anywhere, so the engagement number is not that useful, I think, in general. Um, but I've also set up a bunch of custom goals that I've defined. So I basically want to see when someone clicks on an area of the site that I'm tracking. So I've actually custom defined all these areas. So um, age entry is like the main part of the post. Anyone who's clicked in there, someone who's clicked on the comments, uh, the masthead, which on my site is, you know, this area in here, the, the logo and the menu options. Um, and this is really cool for me just to see, you know, what people are doing on the site. Maybe you have a, a link block somewhere on your site that no one is clicking on. Probably means you don't need it on the site. Um, you can clean up your UI a little bit. Um, you might want to try things like putting in icons to see if that uh, pulls out the menu items more. And you can do all those things and test how the clicks are going. For my experiment, um, I didn't really get enough data to get get a clear idea of what I should do. Um, for the Twitter, it says the original at Devin says, you know, more people clicked on it than they did when it was just called Twitter. But um, you know, 10, 10 users versus fifteen for a conversion, I don't think is a big enough number really to to make that call on. Um, so this is definitely more useful on sites that have huge amounts of traffic. Um, but we can go through and see all the, the different links I had um, and where where people clicked. Also in this, you know, I just set up this test as kind of like an example. Um, this would be for if you wanted to change all of the links to this, because I just had one link set and a whole different link set with different titles. Um, if you're doing a true, if you wanted to do a true test, you'd only change one link at a time and see um, which which one you wanted to change. So maybe 
at Devin says performs better than Twitter, but because I changed the title of this to, maybe that's the reason more people were clicking on it. So you, you got to be careful when you set up these multivariate tests to make sure that you're not changing something else on the page that's also influencing that. Um, one other thing I wanted to show is how I actually set up these tracking goals. Optimizely is like pretty easy to um, it allows you to define these regions that people click on and that you track. But my thought was, or when I've run these tests, it's kind of imprecise because maybe someone's just clicking in this div area, for instance, to because um, they're going to drag the page down or something. So it, it optimizely will still track that as a click in there. But what you really want to do is track clicks on your A tags and stuff. So how I do that is um, with my global JavaScript in here. Um, I define every region that I want to track a click on, so such as comments A, and then I push a specific track event called comments when that happens, and then I've set up all of those events as goals so that they show up over here in, um, in the dashboard to see where people have actually clicked. In terms of setting this up on your WordPress site, you create your account with Optimizely, you set up those, um, those experiment goals and you set up the things you want to track and you set up the experiment. You also need to put the Optimizely code on your website. Um, Optimizely does have a plugin. Um, it's kind of a blunt instrument. It allows you to put in the script that you're going to be running on there. Um, but ideally, I think you'd, you'd probably want to roll your own. You'd probably want to enqueue this yourself, because generally you won't want to run an experiment on every single page of the site. You'll just want to run it on a single page. So you, you wouldn't want to load this optimized code across your whole site, because you, you don't want to load a script that's not being used. But if you do just want to get off the ground and, and try it out, then you can download their plugin and, and put the script in as I've, I've done right here. Um, so I hope that gives you a good overview of what it is and how it works. I'm also going to obviously write some stuff in this post so that uh, you don't have to watch this long video. So feel free to put any questions in the comments below and uh, good luck using Optimizely.